Hi! So today I thought I would play a little bit of a fun game and you might have seen people on YouTube, I say you might have seen, you definitely have seen people on YouTube play the stupid smash or pass game. Uh, I've seen quite a few people now play that sort of game where it's like a choose this or that kind of game um, with things like theatre productions and books, like their favourite books, and it always looks so much fun. So the whole point is basically you have um, a load of names of books or shows or something uh, in a hat and you pick out two and then you have to decide which one you choose. So I'm going to do that today. I've written down a load of my favourite books and I thought it would be fun to try and <laughs> choose between them. I say fun, it's probably going to be so hard to do but I just thought it would be fun to see if I can pick between my children aka my favourite books. So I've written down a load of my favourite books and I have them all in my trusty Illumicrate mug. So I thought I will pick two out and then I have to decide <sighs> which one I pick between the two of them. So I'm really sorry to the books that don't make the cut but this is going to be difficult so let's go. I don't know if I'll make my way through all of them but I'll try and do them all and I'll see how many I get through. So let's go. The first two. Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Dawn Bowman, which I literally just finished last night and oh my god, I love it so much. And oh, The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James, which I also finished recently. I mean, both of these books are so completely different. One of them is contemporary and set now and one of them is sci-fi and set definitely not now. Oh, I mean I love a good sci-fi book and Lauren James books are just the best for plot twists but then Akemi Dawn Bowman's books are also incredible. Ah, I didn't think this would be this hard. Okay so judging by... <laughs> I already feel really guilty for pushing books away. Oh my god, I didn't know this would be so hard. So, uh, okay, so I think just judging by how quickly I read the book and how much I kind of flew through it and how much, this is gonna give it away, but how much I really love a good plot twist, I'm gonna have to pick The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kemi, I'm sorry. Next. Starfish, which is also a Kemi Dawn Bowman, and Lola Rose by Jacqueline Wilson. So you might think a Jacqueline Wilson book is a bit funny to have in this uh, kind of collection of favourite books, but it's my ultimate childhood fave. It's I just love that book so much, so I thought I had to include it. But against... when it's against Starfish... I mean this definitely gotta be Starfish. Starfish is incredible. It was a Kemi Dawn Bowman's first book. It was the book that introduced me to her. The writing in it is just incredible. Um, so as much as I love a good nostalgic childhood favourite, this one's got to be Starfish. So there you go, Akemi. You got you got one of them. Next. I really don't have a lot of variation in my favourite books, I realise. So now I have The Loneliest Girl in the Universe, also by Lauren James. And... Oh! Scythe by Neil Shusterman. <laughs> Neil Shusterman is pretty much my favourite author of all the authors. Like, he's my number one favourite. But The Loneliest Girl in the Universe, which I read last year, is probably in easily in the top five, maybe even top three of my favourite books because it was just incredible. <sighs> so how do I pick? One of my, and also Scythe was like freaking amazing. Like, oh my God, so good. So how do I pick between one of my favorite books and also one of my favorite authors? Why am I doing this to myself? Okay, so again, I can't judge it based on the author 
Neil Shusterman is my favourite author, but Scythe I don't think is my favourite book by him. If we're just judging the books, I think I'm going to have to go for The Loneliest Girl in the Universe because uh, I think it was one of the books that almost kind of launched my love for space and like sci-fi books. I really loved sci-fi books before that, like space books. Uh, like The Martian is one of my favourite books ever and I read that a couple of years ago at least. But I think The Loneliest Girl in the Universe was one of the books that kind of made me realise that specifically sci-fi or like space-based young adult is my favourite genre. So just for that I'm going to have to go for The Loneliest Girl in the Universe. I'm so sorry Scythe. <laughs> Next, Harry Potter. Like I've just written Harry Potter so do I go for just like The Philosopher's Stone or do I go for all seven books pitted against one book. I'll see what the book is and see how much competition it needs and then I can decide. So <laughs> so you know how I just mentioned that The Martian is like one of my favourite books ever? Uh, so I've got The Martian. <laughs> so The Martian or Harry Potter. I think because The Martian is one of my favourite books ever Let's give it a lot of competition and say all seven Harry Potter books. So we have all seven Harry Potters against The Martian. I thought this would be harder, but I think I've just made my decision straight away. So Harry Potter is great and it's kind of formed pretty much my whole life. Like I have been in love with Harry Potter since I was a kid and like I wouldn't have met any of my friends that I went to uni with and lived with for two years if it wasn't for Harry Potter. So it's really important to me. I mean, I have a Harry Potter tattoo. Um, but are the books that great? <laughs> oh, I hope I'm not gonna get lynched for this. It could be a whole video in itself I think and I think people have probably already made this kind of video but Harry Potter obviously is incredible for just how successful it's been and how uh, vast the story is in the world and I love how much J.K. Rowling keeps expanding the world and I know a lot of people complain about that um, just like leave it alone but as someone who loves to kind of build whole worlds and universes I kind of admire JK Rowling for being able to build such an expansive universe and like I talked about Harry Potter in my uni dissertation and like in another one of my essays that I got like really good grades on so Harry Potter's always been great but The Martian is just perfect like the writing in The Martian is amazing and it's my favourite genre I alright it's not young adult but it's still space sci-fi and the writing in it is just amazing so considering that The Martian is like in my top three books it's probably my favourite book or at least one of my favourite books ever uh, I'm gonna have to go for The Martian. That answer was probably longer than it needed to be but uh, once I start talking about Harry Potter I can't stop but uh, I'm gonna go for The Martian so <sighs> I feel nervous seeing what's going to come out of this cup. So we have, oh, Challenger Deep, which is another Neil Shusterman. And, oh no, okay, I've just realised, you know, I said The Martian was my favourite book. It's not. Challenger Deep is my favourite book ever. Why didn't I think of Challenger Deep? Oh my god. Okay, so Challenger Deep is my favourite book of all time ever. And to the, it's to the point where I think people are probably sick of me talking about it now because I talk about it on my podcast and my blog and I've probably mentioned it in videos in the past even though I've only done a couple. Um, I love it to death and <laughs> uh, it's just the best. Um, so whatever is against this has a lot of competition and we have... Okay well this is an easy one. Satellite by Nick Lake. Again another space-based young adult but it's great and I like it but yeah there's absolutely no competition against Challenger Deep so uh, 
yeah, it's it's got to be Challenger Deep. <laughs> Next, we have Flawed by Cecilia Ahern, which was, I think, her first uh, young adult book. She tends to write kind of, I think from what I've seen, I haven't read a lot of her books, but from what I've seen, I think she writes a lot of, like, adult romance and things, um, which isn't my cup of tea. Uh, but Flawed, I think, was her first young adult and I loved it. I listened to it on audiobook and then I also had the book for Christmas and uh, I really need to read it again because it was great. And that's against A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Barnard, which is another really hard decision because both of these books are so completely different, but both amazing. So Flawed, uh, I feel like compared to a lot of these books that I've already said, these maybe are two less kind of massively popular ones. I think for this, as much as I liked Flawed, I'm gonna have to go for A Quiet Kind of Thunder just because of how kind of unique it is and how important the storyline is. Like, I haven't read anything like it before. Uh, the mental health rep in it was so good and I know so many people said that uh, they could see themselves in it and like I've even given it to a couple of people as a present and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely gotta be that. So A Quiet Kind of Thunder. I think we only have a couple left in here. So I said I might not get through them all, but I'm having too much fun to not get through them all. The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken, which I read quite recently um, and I really enjoyed. Uh, I haven't seen the film yet, but people have been saying it was crap, so I'm not in too much of a rush. <laughs> uh, and then, ooh, okay, I have Seed by Lisa Heathfield, which is also right up there in my favourite books. So Lisa Heathfield is one of my favourite authors. Um, she's one of those authors that as soon as she releases a new book I'm going out to get it. Uh, I've read all three of her books so far and they've all been amazing um, but I think Seed out of the three of them was my favourite. Um, it's about like life in a cult and I'm really interested in writing something as well about life in a cult. I'm just like, at the moment I'm researching it a lot and that's definitely a book I need to reread soon. I've talked way too much about Seed that I forgot what the other book was. Darkest Minds. It's definitely gonna have to be Seed. Darkest Minds was good and I read it really quickly and I loved it and like I can't wait to carry on with the series but Seed is just uh, one of those books that is like it has a place in my heart for being one of my favourite books. So nearly done. I don't know why I'm shuffling them because there's literally only like four pieces of paper left. Last but one. We have Illumine and Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. They, again, they're both so different. The interesting thing about these two being together is that they're both kind of similar in that they're both written with completely unique writing styles. So so Moonrise is written in like Sarah Crossan's kind of signature style where the whole book is kind of written in verse so like every page is almost like its own standalone poem like a free verse poem but it all makes the story and Moonrise was about someone who has a brother on death row so it was quite a heavy read. Um, I think most of Sarah Crossan's books are quite heavy uh, with their themes but I just adore them. Like Sarah Crossan is another one of my favourite authors. And then Illumine obviously is a lot more well known. I think most people now know about Illumine um, and know that it's kind of written in a, an interesting format where it's kind of made up of files and transcripts and documents and uh, kind of notes and things. So yeah, both of these books are really unique in their writing styles. Wait, my camera's gonna die. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Camera is saved. Hallelujah. <sighs> so, where was I? Um, Illumine and Moonrise. Again, this is quite a difficult one because they're both so good. I think just because Moonrise isn't my kind of top favourite Sarah Crossan book, um, I loved it, but I have another book that is my favourite one of hers. Um, but Illumine was the first book that I kind of read in its format. I really love the style that it's in with all of the transcripts and the files and things and I would love to even kind of like have a go at trying something like that myself. 
so I think just for that reason and how much I kind of enjoyed reading such a unique format I'm gonna have to go for Illuminae. So we're down to our last two. The cup is empty. I think I know what these two books are gonna be based on the ones that I haven't done yet and they're two of my favourite books. So we've got Unwind, another one by Neil Shusterman. Unwind was the first book that I read by him so that's kind of special for me because he's my favourite author and that was my very first book that I ever read, um, probably like six years ago or something now. Yeah, I thought so. And the other one is One by Sarah Crossan, another Sarah Crossan one. One is, again, interesting, one is the first book that I ever read by Sarah Crossan. So here I've got two favourite authors, like ever, and the two books that were the first ever books that I read by those two authors. So this is gonna be a flipping struggle. I love how this has ended on, like it started on an impossible one and now it's ended on an impossible one. We've come around in a full circle. Unwind, I've told so many people about over the years. Everyone that I went to university with, all my friends, uh, everyone on the podcast, I think I've mentioned it a few times. I've mentioned it a lot on my blog. So it's one of those that I've talked about a lot because obviously when you read a book that's like the first book that introduces you to a favourite author of yours, like of all time, it's gonna be a special book. But one is also the same. Like one is the first book that kind of introduced me to Sarah Crossan's kind of style of writing in free verse. And since then I've read a couple of other books by other authors that are also in that kind of free verse style. I mean, no one does it as good as Sarah Crossan, but it introduced me to a whole new kind of writing style that um, I wouldn't have known about before. You know what? I can't do it. I can't pick. I hope that's not a flaky answer, but for my very last one, I'm just gonna call it a tie because these books are both so special in that they introduced me to authors that became like my favorite authors. And I love them both literally equally. Like I cannot pick between the two. So one by Sarah Crossan and Unwind by Neil Shusterman are equal, I can't pick. So both of you win, <laughs> well done. <laughs> so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. I would love if you could comment below with if you agree with any of my choices. If you've read some of the same books, let me know what you thought of them. And um, if you think that I've kind of made a good decision with the books that I picked. Um, I bet I'll edit this later and just think I completely disagree with what I've just said and I actually prefer all the ones that I said that I would pass but you know. So I've actually got a second part to this where um, I've written down all of the Harry Potter books and I'm just about to do the same with all of those. So I'll pick out two of the Harry Potter books and then I need to choose between those um, and try and compare the books. So um, I'm going to be releasing that exclusively for people who back me on Patreon. So if you're interested in seeing that then there's a link on the screen now or uh, I'll also put a link in the description to my Patreon page. Um, you can sign up on there for as little as two dollars I think a month which is like £1.50. Um, and you get like early access to my YouTube videos and podcast episodes um, and little other posts as well. So if you're interested in seeing this again but with all of the Harry Potter books then head on over there and I'll be uploading it there. So there you go. I'll see you soon with another video.